Your app is perfect. So it's time to deploy it to production. What if it were as easy as clicking deploy and Power Platform would check for solution dependencies, deploy it to a production environment and hook up your connections. Pipelines for Power Platform are here and Casey and Kartik are gonna show us how they've taken something so complicated and made it so, so easy. Today on PowerCAD Live. Welcome to PowerCat Live. My name is Phil Topnis from the PowerCat team, and today we're here with Casey and Kartik. Hey guys. Hey Phil. Hey Phil, how are you doing? Back. I'm doing. I'm doing all right. I am excited to talk about Power Platform pipelines. We've been waiting a long time for this, but for anyone that hasn't heard what they are, Casey, what do they do? Yeah. So if you think about what we've had in the product, it's been very manual. You can export solution, go and import it somewhere else, and then. Uh, more recently, we started introducing automation tool sets within Azure DevOps and within GitHub. Um, but those dots haven't really connected yet. And so if you want automation, you have to go to Azure DevOps. But the problem is we leave the citizen developer out of the picture. So that was really our goal is lowering the bar to entry so that anyone can get set up very easily. And we can incorporate both the citizen developer, any professional developers, as well as the IT admins. And they can work using the same ALM process and interact with it using their own tool sets. So can you show us how this makes what was pretty complicated before, but makes it so easy for any maker? Yeah, absolutely. Here, right within the context of the solution that they're working in, in any developer environment that's linked to this pipeline, they can go ahead and within a couple clicks deploy their solution. And you can see when this loads, what's really great about this is we're actually pre-validating the solution against the target environment. So we're checking for missing dependencies, whether they have active layers, we're making sure that they're gonna get from point A to point B and it's gonna be successful. We also collect all the different connections and just automatically sign them in in the target environment. They didn't even have to leave the context of development. Uh, we do this automatically in, in the test and then the production environment. Similarly, they can provide new values for the environment variables. And then they hit deploy and that's it. We've queued up an automated deployment to the test environment. Now they can actually repeat this same process for production when they're ready to go to production. And not only that, now you have a full change log of all your previous deployments, whether they were successful, whether they failed. And we also have developer tooling within the CLI. And so we've drastically simplified even what a professional developer needs to orchestrate. So now they can retrieve details about a pipeline. And then all they have to do when they want to deploy their solution is just specify the stage that they want to execute the solution and the version of the solution they want to deploy. And that's it. You had me at checks for missing dependencies. That was all I needed to hear. I'm sold. So this this is a new preview capability. So let me ask, uh, is this gonna work for something I build in Power Virtual Agents? Absolutely. Power Pages? Absolutely. Yep. How about my <laughs> Dataverse schema? Is it all gonna go in here and move to the new environment? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Power Apps? Yep. Of course. Yes, uh, of course. Cloud Flows? Yes. Nope. Data Flows? Hmm. Yes. <laughs> yes. Connection <laughs> references? Absolutely. So uh, right. I wasn't Go I ahead. wasn't able to stump you guys. It feels like this is even for a preview capability is very complete in what it covers. Uh, what what got it there? Yes, it's an end product capability, but we already had a lion's share or stable of good, well well established practices that we wanted to go ahead and enshrine into the product in itself. So if it look if it looks too good to be true, it's not. <laughs> All right, it is. It's because it's because there's been a lot of thought process that's been put in on the kind of experiences that we want to go put in place. It's built on top of the knowledge that we've mustered for so long. And, and Phil, I mean, this is also from your experiences with customers too. So we've actually taken feedback from folks like yourselves and actually incorporated that into into the product uh, in that context as well. So then I guess the next obvious question, you know, you're asking it is, what took so long? <laughs> Casey, you want to take a first stab at it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would say kind of along those same lines. What we're seeing a lot in the market now is the concept of fusion development, where we want to incorporate citizen developers, and they might work on the same project as a team of professional developers. 
And the admin might want to control kind of, or at least have visibility over that process, right? Uh, where where things are at within their within their tenant. And to kind of adding to what Casey just said, low code application development platforms are now vital to the way organizations develop and deploy software. Sure. The the implications are so profound, which is why it took us a little longer, but we had to make sure that we bought this at a time where there was a proper product market fit. And 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 that was the reason why it took so long. But now that we're here, we are we're in the process of going ahead and bringing more and more people into the fold when it comes to building strong, scalable, governed solutions and deploying them at scale. Kartik says it's worth the wait, you guys. So if I've already invested in setting up Azure DevOps pipeline or using GitHub or the ALM accelerator, mm -hmm. do I need to worry about pipelines or do I need to throw away everything else I've done? No, no, that's, that's, that's not what you have to do. I mean, you know, let, let me put it this way. If we were to go do that, then that's shame on us. <laughs> all right. Um, Everything that, everything that we have designed in such a way is to make sure they all work together in a very fluid fashion. So when Casey showed you the demo with the command line, it's, yeah. it's a kind of a, a precursor to actually making sure that we can now uh, orchestrate Azure DevOps tasks that can kick off pipelines in, pipe, in uh, Power Platform pipelines. And at the same time, so you think of it as daisy chaining your uh, Azure DevOps pipeline. So you can have a, a very sophisticated, complex Azure DevOps pipeline running inside Azure DevOps or for that matter, GitHub Actions. And then at the same time, kick, kicking off a similar pipelines project, a uh, process rather, inside pipelines itself. And they can now work in conjunction, all right? Now, we have also gotten feedback from some of our initial early private preview customers that they like the, the current control plane so much, they would love for that to be the main orchestrator to orchestrate that across all. Well, now, that's all well and good. It's a little, you know, it sounds great in concept. Implementation is a little hard. <laughs> I get why they would want that, though. That does make sense, right? Because the pipelines interface is, is really nice. It does. Yeah. It does. So let me ask you, uh, will this work in any environment in my tenant? For the most part, yeah. Um, there is a limitation right now on just uh, the default environment. So that's something that we're, we're still working through. But other than yeah, that, yeah, all your uh, development, test, and production environment. And what's planned for pipelines now? What's, what's in your roadmap? So one of the things that are going to be coming out very soon, the first aspect is around extensibility. So, um, you know, instead of just a basic deployment, maybe we want, to, we want to put some more rigor, have custom logic around this. You might want to attach an approval to it, or you might even want to, you know, integrate with some other system that, that uh, is managing aspects of your deployment. And so all that's going to be possible, both from a pre-deployment perspective as well as a post-deployment perspective. And there's two ways to do that. So basically, um, through low code, you can use cloud flow, uh, cloud flows, kind of extend it that way, or through the plugin system if you actually want to write C sharp code. Um, the other big thing that we're working on right now is scheduling. So um, in the real world, we realize that you don't always want to deploy things immediately. Even as Microsoft, we don't deploy things uh, during people's business hours. We wait until the weekends and people are off. Um, it just minimizes risk doing it that way. And so you're gonna have the same capabilities for your power platform solution deployments. Um, and then I would say the last kind of major thing is around service principle nice. support. Uh, so basically a, a lot of customers, and we actually encourage this as well, to uh, lock down access in production environments. You don't want people customizing anything there, right? Uh, so you just wanna deploy your solution. And so with a service principle, you can make sure that the maker doesn't have any customization permissions in production, and the pipeline's gonna carry out the deployment on their behalf. What a great roadmap. Uh, pipelines are here, they're now in public preview. The docs are in the description. If people try this out and they wanna leave comments for you, can they do that down below? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. All right, leave comments for yeah, Carter and Casey and go try out Pipelines. Thanks for being here, you guys. Thanks so much, Phil, really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having us. It was, as always, a ball. Thanks for watching, you guys. Hey, Simo, I just remembered I didn't turn on the camera. I know, you guys were just like, oh, you guys do this so much, and now we're like total amateurs. Sorry, I'll be right back. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is good.